Okay, guys, I'll admit it. I'm estimating here when I say 95% of poker players, I have no idea whether that's the correct number or not. But I think it's a really, really high percentage of people who aren't maximizing their potential earnings at the poker table for the following reason. Skill edge. They're not prioritizing what it means to have a skill edge, particularly preflop. When you're better than your opponent, and let's face it, when you have a recreational player or fish, whatever you want to call it, in the pool, you are going to have a very large edge on that player if you're watching this video. You know, if they're like a true VPIP 45% sort of player that doesn't really have a basic strategy in place, you're going to be printing a lot of money just simply by being involved in spots with them. You can also 3-bet them way, way wider than your range chart tells you because they're opening wider and they're calling a lot and then playing badly and giving you a ton of implied odds through their mistakes. In this video, you're going to see me play live, you're going to see me take a few spots preflop that people wouldn't normally, and I'm going to show you how I'm using my perceived skill edge to do that. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, well, it's all very well for you to say that if you think you've got a big skill edge against the pool. What if I'm like a reg that's breaking even? Well, here's the thing. If you're breaking even after rake, you're still beating the average opponent pretty badly pre-rake, and when that average opponent is actually a much weaker player, you will be beating them badly post-rake as well, and you should absolutely be isolating them wider and getting involved in more spots. Forget rake structure, forget hand charts, forget frequencies. None of this has anything to do with how profitable you are. Taking the right spots does. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. For all of our paid content, it's carrotcorner.com, and let's get to the video. Couple of tables of action, just opened fives here in the small blind. This is not a bad spot to check raise actually, blind versus blind. If this player is 3-betting properly, then they are going to have plenty of just absolute air hands. And those air hands are quite useful for us to get fold equity against in this spot. But alas, against a, I guess a recreational player probably, going 7.5 big blinds here, I am going to fold fives. The reason I have this read that this is probably a recreational player is twofold. One, it's just unusual for regs to half pot that flop and it's not that it's terrible to half pot that flop you know that's not what i mean i'm not saying oh it's so bad to half pot there that that must be a fish not at all it's just that fish sizing is generally going to be more like half pot or bigger and reg sizing is very often just going to be one third pot also there are some flag based reads going on you know there's certain proportions of regulars to recreationals in different countries and we should probably use those reads and you know be sensible about the demographics King Queen, you can go either way here, you can call, you can 3-bet. Again, I think a recreational player here, out of position. I quite like keeping the SBR a bit deeper, especially if I have a hand that's a little bit thin as a value 3-bet. The good news is if you do 3-bet, you won't get 4-bet as often, you also won't get folds as often. This hand does benefit a lot from fold equity. This sizing is not great to see, but King Queen with the Queen of Diamonds, of course, we're just going to be calling here. This will be not massively winning, like only slightly winning to call flop in this node and easy fold to pot on the turn. Pot is a sizing that you guys should treat a bit differently to a B60 or B75 or something like that. But the way to think about this spot is not really about your own range. It's not about saying, I could have an ace, so I'm going to fold a king. That might be a comfort blanket to you, but that's not really what matters. The reason that's a fold is that the data point of ace, king, x married with the pot sizing and it being cut off instead of like button or small blind, those data points make the range strong enough and value heavy enough that we just want to fold pretty much any bluff catcher there that isn't also high equity draw, like pair plus flush draw. We're of course going to continue and we might mine some flush draw that has a little bit of something else or a flush draw that has some showdown value we might call, but certainly not going to be calling the king queen. King 10 here, in theory, is not a very high EV peel. It's probably indifferent between calling and folding. It's not good enough to squeeze. I'd expect fold equity to be a bit lower in this climate. So squeezing is well and truly out, but I think calling for the reason of flopping two pair. So uh, we're going to call here and flop two pair and reevaluate. I was ranting in a, a recent video about how much I hate the reasoning call to reevaluate. When you face this situation, you just want to get more money in the pot. You can't guarantee that money goes in on the turn here by just calling. We also have aces over here, which is quite nice. So I'm just going to pump this up immediately here. And the idea being that people are betting pretty margy, calling pretty margy. We're out of position, so if we do check later, we can't ensure pot growth. This is slightly awkward now. We're obviously still doing really well against like King Jack, King 9, 8, 9, stuff like that. But Jack 9 and Ace Jack both getting there is not ideal. I think the best play is to crying bet call off at this SPR. It's not going to be amazing, but we are not dead when villain jams here and we're losing, like we're not dead. And we can, of course, still face jams from pair plus straw hands. That's a very nice river. We now beat sevens, which is cool. Going to continue jamming here. Villain's range is entirely comprised by showdown value. We didn't get any action with the aces, by the way. We do have another hand going on that we'll come to in a second. But first, let's jam here. Get snapped by the straight. 
nice little river so yeah not being dead being a key ingredient i'm gonna check here with the queen high flush draw this is a hand that doesn't necessarily crave a gigantic pot three way here so if we do start betting and blasting away and we hit a flush we'll be happy but we won't be ecstatic and sometimes we're on the wrong end of a cooler that's not really the reason to check the reason to check is just that it's indifferent and i quite like transparency in the real world so in theory, we are totally indifferent between checking and betting the flop. And because of the way people play multi-way pots quite transparently, and because our hand isn't one that wants to like rush pot growth for stacking weaker players or anything, I quite like playing it this way. Villain checks the river here, but after some thought, I would imagine our showdown value is extremely low here. And I wonder how good it's going to be to like pot it. It really depends on like the fold equity in this spot. I'm going to do it because my instinct tells me this is just going to be good. I don't think an eight's going to check river. I think there's going to be way too much one pair. So even though there's some illusion of showdown value there, I don't actually think that's enough to want to go ahead and check. Over here we have open date 7 in the cutoff. We've got a call. This is obviously a very good turn card for our opponent's range. We have nothing going on. We have not even over cards to hands like 9s or 10s. So I think that if there's ever a pure give up, this is probably going to be it on this turn card. Although we are in position, and that normally allows us to bluff with impunity to some extent, we have to be a bit careful and rein it back when it's a card that's so good for the opponent's range. This is a very clear bet check bet on River though. I think, hmm, I'll just go for this sizing. I think this is about right. This will just be really winning. There's a lot of hands and villains range here, like five, sixes, sevens, ace, two, ace, three, queen, three, etc. And all of that's very likely to go in the bin. So definitely bet check bet that spot. Don't worry about whether you'll get looked up or whether it's believable or any of these things. That's really not where the EV resides. The EV resides in the fact that villains range is capped, not slow playing enough on the river. They're meant to be going for tricky trappy check raises as we know if we are diligent students of the Carrot Poker School. We have studied the out of position game in grade two lecture five and in grade two lecture five we talk a lot about that phenomenon, about like the fact that out of position needs to be a snake in the grass, it needs to be tricky and trappy. And because people don't do that, and because it's a deteriorating texture there, the bet check bet's just going to be really good. I'm going to call this 3x, although this is getting a bit close. But I think skill edge is going to be way more important than things like rake structure here. People sometimes prioritize the wrong factor in poker. Like they'll say things like, oh, this rake structure is really bad, so you can't call king four against 3x, only 2.5 according to GTO Wizard. And it's like, well, fuck GTO Wizard. Not like the people behind the program or the software, but the fact that some players want to go straight to that to give them an answer preflop, and they're very happy to just ignore loads of other factors. We have jacks here and we have C bet a third. That are more important, like Scale Edge, this is a fantastic spot. I'm just going to overbet. I mean, it's very conceivable that I can just get looked at by Ace High here, that this can just be not believed. So just overbetting trip seems good. Over here, we've been raised. We do get the call there, which is nice. From Ace King, yep, so Ace High can look that up. Again, it's a big mistake to just sort of assume that people are not going to pay you off just because you used a really big sizing. It's a very natural thought process to succumb to, like this kind of negativity bias where you know i'll have students say things like well nothing worse is going to call me when they're value betting but simultaneously say well there's no fold equity when they're bluffing like it really is easy to fall into that trap of doomsday thinking in poker jacks here we got check raised on the flop we called the term was a king we went check check i guess we still have a decent amount of showdown here against like nines no spade and stuff and i don't rate the fold equity against spade very high or just some absolute give up yeah okay this is obviously a pathetic squeeze size. I am going to 4-bet here. If we do get 5-bet, this is going to get a bit gross, though. This 4-bet was slightly larger than I wanted to make it this SPR, but I was timing down a little bit. Rabbit hunting. A very bad habit. As bad a habit as smoking. I used to smoke, and I still rabbit hunt. What are you going to do? Left hand table. Over here, I'm going to go ahead and 3-bet because I'm involved in this hand, and I would like this hand to end preflop. This one. I want this to end preflop because I have a decision to make over here. Flop is going to be either check raise or check call. I think I prefer check call. I won't talk too much about that. I've turned a double gutter though, so let's check that and see what happens. Again, I'm going to bet flop here. You could check. It's not ridiculous to check, but simplifying to range bet's okay. And also, I want this hand to end because I have another hand. I want one of these hands to end. Bill and bets again here. I Like, raise is a thing in theory. Call is also definitely a thing. We've turned a flush over here in board pairs. I'm going to just call. Like, it's kind of annoying, but I don't really rate the fold equity. We are kind of deep though, actually. Am I just going to raise? I'm just going to call. And we have whiffed over here. Let's try not to time out here. How deep are we? Deep enough to use B75, I think. Yeah, raises the main play on the turn there in the left-hand table, but my opponent looks like a recreational player. I've overcooked the sizing slightly on the right here. It's got different things going on, but not a big deal. It's Daniel Negreanu. says, I love rake. Seems about right. 
Yeah, that spot with the King-10 is super annoying. Like, I think calling and just having the implied odds on the river and actually having some showdown value there is fine because, like, your King-10 is going to be live against the myriad of draws that are lower showdown value. But the problem is that, obviously, we lose to some bluffs when we check river, and that's why the hand is going to play, if not pure raise, then a very high raise frequency on the turn. It might mix between call and raise, or it might pure raise. We ended up calling because I think one danger of being against a recreational player there is that they play quite a lot of jam randomly when raised on the turn, just a lot of spew jam with like over pairs and stuff like that that's not meant to happen. And also I'd really hate to miss my opportunity to stack a set because I get jammed on on the turn there as well. So because rec players are probably not appreciating the polarization of our range there when we check raise turn and are three betting too often, it may well mean that just checking is the best play. It could also be that on that kind of scarier card, they're under bluffing in the first place, which again could mean that the call is just the best play. So yeah, it's a little bit weird, that spot, and it feels gross to just meekly check call and check fold the river. Like, I get it, it doesn't feel great, but I think it's absolutely fine. Do we want to value bet here? Not against small blind, no way. Like, there's too much sixes, sevens, fives. We went a lot here, but not enough to value bet. Hopefully has ace queen or something. Or king eight, I think that hand could well consider bluffing river there. It doesn't have to though, it is a spot that if villain starts bluffing willy nilly, they can really over bluff because, well, actually, not from small blind, but then again, these people are flatting king eight from small blind. So, in my mind, I think GG poker is a really good place to play poker because while the rake is a bit higher than it is in other places, as stated here by the fake DNEGS account, Germany, I don't think DNEGS is German. Imagine a German DNEGS, what would you feel about that? Do you think he'd be as annoying, more annoying, less annoying as a German? But yeah, even though the rake is a bit higher, the pool is just so, so much softer at all stakes than it is on Poker Stars. Like, Poker Stars is where I kind of grew up playing, and it's my, not grew up, I didn't play when I was like 12. My, my buddy James did play when he was 12. He was like the weird kid that somehow managed to create a poker account, but I didn't do that. But I played a long time at Poker Stars, and the games were great for many, many years. The site was super reputable around Black Friday 2011. A few kids out there that were just barely born, there was a, a huge deal. No one knew if they were getting their funds back. Phil Tilt went under poker stars eventually bought it over and reimbursed everyone they were like really heroic and i did a lot of work with poker stars i wrote articles for them i did a bunch of training with them at their school department i used to do educational streams and stuff like that videos all sorts of stuff courses i did all sorts of stuff back in the day for poker stars school so it's a shame to see the games dry up to a point where they're not really a good choice anymore and I actually think the GG software is beginning to surpass the Stars software as well. I never thought I'd say that there was better software out there than Stars, but I actually prefer the software now that I'm used to it. I'm going to bet here with Ace-5. The idea is that there's loads of high implied odds situations that can happen in the future against recreational players here. We have enough going on. We have a naked overcard, which is also just going to be good a lot of the time. Now we can check and we can actually show down here in a soft pool against like Queen-10 and just win because people are missing these mandatory bluff situations that they need to be finding. Now we don't really win, but I also think the fold equity is nothing special on this node. Over here, this is what we call a min thin 3-bet. This guy has a really high VPIP, and we're taking a hand that isn't really meant to 3-bet from this position and just trying to get into spots with weaker players. Pot, very underbluffed node after filtering, so two data points here that won't make you want to fold any bluff catcher. This is worse than a bluff catcher, but you get the point. Pot size bet and post-filtering, meaning that villain called earlier. We've flopped very well over here. I'm going to go ahead and bet about half pot, I think. I'm going to bet somewhere around half pot here. Got cold called here as well, so really just the dream spot, unless we run into threes. Over here, similar thing. I don't know this player, but 2.3 looks a bit reggy. I'm going to let this go for two reasons. One, it's a little bit of a stretch. Two, I think villains are reg and three, actually. I've got a hand going on the other table still. Just going to be 60 here. I think starting to check here, regardless of what theory says, is kind of a mistake, unless you think your opponent's really volatile. I'm, I'm just a big fan of continuing to bet this node for the most part. And although Diamond Flush gets there, we're obviously still jamming at this SPR with Jack-9. I'm going to take a little bit of time. If we get snapped by a flush, we get snapped by a flush. But of course, there's pocket queens in range here. There's aces in range here. There's ace-jack. There's king-jack suited. There's plenty of stuff that we can get paid by. And of course, check fold and check caller, both inferior plays. So easy shove. Better than running into a flush, I guess. Going to check back with pretty much everything on a board like 776 cutoff versus big blind, unless I have an exploitative reason to bet. Gonna check again and just bluff catch river. I'm just setting up for a really winning bluff catch here. A spot where people just definitely under bluff. I think we can go for one big blind here. Or two. I think we'll go for one. Then value betting this node is definitely important. Adds up in the long term. This is not a play you're meant to be able to make. But remember in GTO, the checking ranges you're facing are just way more protected. And they're just going to punish you much more for thin value betting. When you start thin value betting against the solver in position, you begin to wish that you checked. 
And that's why when you train against the solver, like day in, day out, you just train hours and hours in a GTO trainer, then you come to play against humans and you sort of impose the logic that you had against solver against humans, it's a big problem. Like it doesn't work. King 10, by the way, way too thin there at that SBR, you're going to get jammed on a lot. Don't three bet light when Velen has a 40 big blind stack because they can just ship it on you. And then you just have to fold a hand like that and squander a bunch of money and equity and EV at the same time. I think this is probably a GTO fold, but I'm going to peel with the skill edge. Probably, oh man, I am just hitting so many two pair today. This is not an edited video particularly. I've been recording for 17 minutes and we're going to cut out a bit of downtime. So probably for you, it's been about 14 or 15, but that's it. You know, we are actually just flopping the nuts over and over again here. You just want to overbet the spot generally. I don't care that I block an ace. The queen can still call this. People are quite spewy. I got shot will call a lot of the time. Definitely just an overbet node. When you start thinking in terms of like, what's your opponent's range and what am I going to do about that? Your poker life gets a lot easier. When you're obsessing about exactly what your own strategy is, your poker life gets a bit harder, well, a lot harder, and you begin to break touch with reality in terms of like what actually maximizes EV. So the thing that maximizes EV is doing the right thing. Like you're not indifferent. One of your lines is probably higher EV than the other and you have to choose the best one. This is our ethos at Carrot Corner, but we want to do that with a foundation of theory. And to get that, we have the Carrot Poker School. You can check it out at carrotcorner.com. And that was a seamless plug. I didn't even plan that plug. The best plugs are the ones you don't even mean, definitely. I'm feeling on the ball today. I won a game of Teamfight Tactics already, which is rare for me. So if you don't know what that is, then you're missing out. It's an amazing game. It's arguably better than poker, but maybe doesn't have the longevity of poker, actually. It doesn't have as many variations and formats that are good. Gonna call here with Jack 8 and also call here with Ace 9 man trips and the backdoor madness. I think check raising the Jack 8 here is a really, this is a really good check raise. This is the kind of board that looks better for Villain than it is. I think people are gonna go wrong. I'm guessing when George 94 checks back, he's gonna continue checking back at a super high frequency. So I'm just gonna be 75. That's an exploit, by the way. You could obviously check again there in theory. And yeah, I want to go big here because when I'm raising this texture, actually, I do want to... No, I'm going to go a bit smaller. I do want to raise some jacks and tens and stuff here. If I wasn't raising those hands, I would, like, go bigger if I was just raising sets. And against under the gun, you know, you don't have to raise jacks or tens there, but I think I will at some frequency. And, you know, this isn't important. I'm not actually worried that Villain knows my strategy or can figure out exactly how I'm playing or whatever. The giant, I mean, this is just, like... He's tagged fish already, but this is just really bad. There's no reason. To, I mean, you are deep, but there's still no reason to do this in position against the polarizing range. Polarizing mean becoming more polarized through action and may become even more polarized later. Pocket potatoes with three bet here. I obviously do want to see bet the board here, but I'm going to just try and size this down if I can. My boomer fingers will let me bet 4.3. Arthritic boomer fingers, guys, you know, 37 now. So you got to contend with these things. Oh my God, I misread the action. This guy cold called my three bet. Or did I call his three, but I have no concept of what happened here, guys. Can you let me know in the comments what actually happened here? Because I have no idea. I'm assuming that I three bet somebody and this guy cold called, in which case I should have just checked the flop. But I didn't realize, but it's okay. I didn't invest too much. And sometimes we went against nines, like once in a blue moon. Still went against nines. I don't rate the fold equity in this spot. I don't like raise here after turn check. I don't think there's enough fold equity. I mean, it's not ridiculous because people bet way too much bad ace x here, and, but they just also bet a lot of really good hands too. And they may not fold bad ace -X after the turn action. So yeah, I should check back the flop against the tighter cold call range if that's what happened. If I was actually calling a three bet there, I don't think I was or I would have considered jamming that SBR. So there's no way that happened. 8-7 over here. This is super close, but with skill edge. What is that flag? Belarus. Yeah, Belarus is actually quite a strong pokering nation. Is that the verb? Pokering? Poker playing nation? 8-7, I think you can check race here. Your six out's pretty clean. You're 10 backdoor is really bad though not the best backdoor in the world i think i'll just call against a bigger bet here this is not bad sizing for this board villain's got a relatively intact not advantage there's a 10 that we spoke about so hitting the jack here is obviously garbage because any king is going to hit a better hand so we have a river blunder theorem spot meaning we have to bet we talk about that in cps we can go one third we can go p75 we can overbet. i'm actually going to overbet this combo i think this is a pretty nice one to use Okay, over here, ace-5 deuce, better check of both, okay. I guess I bet because people just don't realize they can check raise this texture as much as they actually can. So I like bet here. Boom, got him. I love winning pots by just c-betting on boards that aren't that great for me. Ace-5 deuce is just not that great for me. Obviously, my hand can c-bet, right? It's nothing special about it, but definitely open jack-5 here. Don't worry about it. Always c-bet this spot because if you check, recreationals are going to lead way too wide. Many recreationals in this pool. Like, how can you not want to play this pool? 
this pool is definitely my number one choice for anyone that is choosing to play 100 nl yes you'll pay more rake but i aim to prove that this is like mega profitable still i'm trying to get a really big win rate in this game guys like i want to beat it for like eight or nine pb per 100 over a big sample maybe that's ambitious maybe you guys are thinking oh that's an unachievable like you're living in a fantasy land p but i think i can i like block here again actually just a lot of hands here that can level themselves into pure folding, like deuce x, or threes or fours or fives or sixes or whatever. I mean, we beat like three deuce now and stuff like that. Queen jack that just decides not to bluff river. I don't think this is a great triple spot after do filterings. I think this is a check. There's probably like a 6% showdown value. But we'll take it. King three of diamonds, yeah, that may fold river, it may not. Some people in this pool are overfolding that spot and some are just like massively stationary. Like sometimes you just run a bluff in this pool and you feel pretty good about it. And you just get snapped by the most absurd hand. Someone asked me in a comment to a YouTube video this morning, I woke up and I did that thing that I do where I just start looking at my phone. It's a really bad habit. I should just get up and drink like a hydration salt drink, put the kettle on for the coffee, have something to eat, deal with the cats, feed the cats before they start shouting at me. How thin is this against a random Japanese player? orderly system that sounds like a man that knows his gto right my name is orderly system my god that's scary that's like some kind of something would come out of the 1920s or something 1930s soviet union kind of screen name orderly system death by efficiency i'm not gonna three bet king five against that name that's too scary man all right a six i'm gonna three bet the because i want it to end and i'll have two opportunities to make it end by three betting pre or c betting flop is I want to focus on Kalthor. I want to take Kalthor's money, and I want full concentration to do that. That did get through on the other table, by the way. You can see this is real time. This isn't editing. This is just me pressing hotkeys between two tables, as you can see. Some people get confused. They're like, he's only showing the winning hands. It's like, no, I'm just running good, man. Honest, I'm just running really good. You would run good as well sometimes if you, like, noticed. You're too busy lamenting your bad luck to notice. Get call after tanking. Looks like I've got 9-8. That would be a very borderline hand against the sizing. So obviously we're just going to be calling turn here. I might fold River, honestly. Like, against under the gun, like the triple in this pool is just not that forthcoming. I don't know this guy to be particularly different to the pool. I don't know if he's better than the pool because he won a tournament, has some stars in his thing. Probably not. I'm going to block here. I could also big bet, though. The guy either plays okay. I should probably big bet, actually, because I don't think he's going to raise that spot enough as a bluff. So that's probably a misplay. I should big bet. But I got away with it because he had nothing anyway, so it didn't matter. But yeah, in order for block with ace jack to be equivalent to big bet there, villain either needs to be overly elastic to sizing, unlikely, when there's loads of missed draws, or villain needs to be raising your small bet as a bluff too often or something like that, and that's also not going to happen. So I'm going to call the five deuce because it's way too good to fold. Go 52 of spades. 52 cards in the deck, 52 of spades, let's go. I mean probably just a pure check i don't hate betting a big blind or something and just mopping up some equity actually this is going to be so underprotected that mopping up here for like some tiny sizing is probably better than checking let's just clean the floor here with villain just get villain and put him on the end of the mop and just like clean up that equity guys harvest that ev if he wants to check a range that's full of 10 nine of hearts and then just fold those combos i'm really happy about it easy call here as well don't worry about your charts take this edge you have a big edge why are you not taking it this guy's 100 VPEP, he's going to play badly. He knows how to range bet though. I guess we just ISO here with 5-4 again. Similar idea, you want to be in these pots to win them. Check raise small is probably the best play here with this open ender. It's just going to be like a lot of lazy betting that has nothing, just folding. A lot of time recreational players don't realize just how tiny this is. I'm just going to fold now. I'm drawing dead sometimes and I will have no fold equity later. What new has had enough of my antics it seems? Good for him. Or her. Let's see if I would have made a straight flush. No, but a pair in a back door is nothing to be scoffed at. All right, guys, I'll be wrapping this up shortly. Thank you for watching. If you like our stuff, it's carrotcorner.com. Remember, for the Carrot Poker School, Cash Injection, the new grade of the Carrot Poker School, grade E, by the way, is super useful. It's based on MDA, which means mass data analysis. It takes a bunch of data across 50 to 200 NL for the last couple of years and shows you how that average population is playing in tons of common spots to help you build exploitative strategies. So super valuable 10 8 i mean i don't know this player i'm gonna assume if they're limping small blind they're not very good and i'll get limp raised rarely so i'm just gonna raise like almost everything here until i know that it's a good limping strategy then i'll be more careful i'm gonna go ahead and just use small sizing here on ace ace three we get massively limp raised so still a weaker player obviously not a good limp strategy just some this is ace king or jacks like almost every single time if this isn't jacks 
I'll be surprised. Can I like accuse him of having Jack? So I'm going to accuse him. Jack, Jack. Accused. There we go. We have accused him of having Jacks. And now we're going to fold. Uh, hopefully he'll show us Jacks. Prove us right. Come on. Come on. Show us the Jacks. He had Jacks, guys. Don't worry about it. He's been accused. He has to go around for the rest of the day. Like, he's going to go order a sandwich somewhere. All loosey-goosey having a sandwich. And he's going to, like, have it in the back of his brain as he's ordering that Subway that I knew he had Jacks in that hand. And it's just going to... He's going to enjoy his sandwich a little bit less because of that. And I'm glad for that because, you know, if you make that kind of sizing, you don't deserve to enjoy your lunch. It's nearly lunchtime, which is why I'm thinking about lunch. It's nearly time for a fillet steak. I have a lot of fillet steaks because they are relatively low in fat and quite high in protein, and I was told that that's a good thing for me to do. So fillet steaks, come at me in the comments. You disagree? Fine. You can say something. It's a free country. You can say, you can say whatever you want, but I'm still going to have my fillet steak. All right, let's... I guess it's a fold to 12. It's just a little bit of a stretch too far. I'm going to click set out next big blind, ne not next big blind, next hand. This will be the last hand. Hopefully we get to check over here and see a flop. But yeah, it's carrotcorner.com for all of that content. And I'll be back with another video soon. We are on one video a week right now. Oh my God, this is so gross. I guess we just peel because it's like, how often does this get jammed? Like probably not enough. This is a horrible spot, but I think with skill edge, you can do a lot of things. Maybe I'm just too confident because I've been running good today. This is super gross because like there's a player behind that can raise our redraw to the aces tainted by king jack and stuff like that and some other hands well, the ace is pretty good but it's, it's still looking at ace queen ace 10 i think i just fold here without closing the action it's annoying like heads up you obviously never fold a hand like that and especially not to small bet in a more normal spot but there i think we fold so that's it for today as i was saying there we're on one video a week we are going to go back up to multiple videos a week soon and our subscription service is going to come out sometime in the spring on carrot corner where we'll have content not just for me but from other coaches as well you can subscribe pay a monthly fee and get access to the subscription video library, which will be a separate part of Carrot Corner. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Remember to hit that like button and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.